Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and with Halloween right around the corner, I thought it was time to build a one-chunk haunted house. The creepy face on the outside is loosely inspired by movies like Monster House and The Nightmare Before Christmas, the inside is full of spooky surprises, and as always, it fits within a single chunk of 16 by 16 blocks. Let's get into it! Find yourself a swamp and some dark oak, then place logs at the four corners of your house like so. Four blocks in from the front of your chunk, one block in from the back, and two blocks in from each side. Start to fill in the side walls with a combination of dark oak and spruce planks, leaving gaps for one block wide windows. Mix in some logs here and there, and make the whole thing 11 blocks high. We'll add iron bars and signs to the windows, making it look like the house is abandoned and boarded up. Then repeat this for the opposite wall. Don't worry if your walls don't copy this design exactly, as long as they've got the same sort of vibe. I'm leaving this bit here open for now, it'll be covered by logs later. Fill in the entire back wall, no windows this time, and mix in a bit of spruce here too. This is going to be covered by a tree design in a couple of minutes. At the front of the house, build a row of dark oak and work out where your doorway is going to go. We'll put this one four blocks in from the edge, then fill in the area behind that with black concrete about five blocks high. Now, using dark oak planks and stairs, we're going to create a crooked wooden mouth stretching from one side to the other. This might take a bit of trial and error to get right, so don't be afraid to step back and look at it from time to time, then make a few adjustments. Fill in the top row with planks again, and this section should be about seven blocks high. We're going to build a front porch in a moment, so this doorway will have to come up by one block. Build up the left hand side here and we'll place the first eye window, making a W shape out of orange, yellow, red and black stained glass panes. On the right hand side we'll build one block back and shape the eye slightly more like a triangle to give the face a little more depth. Start the front porch with logs, one block in from each edge, then build out two more blocks using a mixture of spruce and oak, throwing in oak fences where you'd find a porch handrail or roof supports. To conceal some lighting, add torches or glowstone underneath the pistons, with the piston head facing upwards for another wood texture. Add a front step opposite the doorway. We're going to add some framing to the sides of the house using more dark oak logs. The frames can be warped and uneven, especially since the house has taken on a life of its own. It's almost as if the wood has grown organically up the sides of the house instead of being used for construction. We'll cover the gap on the opposite side of the house using a straight pillar, and then branch some other logs off it and start to frame the front of the house around where we've already placed the planks. On the back of the house we're going to add a kind of flat tree, using the logs to make a branching tree shape, like so, and then adding leaves around it. This can grow up a couple of blocks beyond where the wall currently ends, because we're going to raise the height of this back wall so it meets the roof later. You can even add some vines here if you want it to look more overgrown. At each corner of the house and halfway along each side we'll add more logs to look like the roots of a tree, even burrowing some of them down into the nearby grass. We'll do the same around the edges of the front porch, and try as much as possible to make these look like hands, as though the house is clawing its way into the dirt around it. You can use dark oak fences and leaves to add to the effect here. Some of the grass blocks around the house can be swapped for podzol or mycelium, which will allow you to grow mushrooms and dead bushes freely around the structure. We'll add plenty of mycelium around the main entrance. Grass, ferns, and the occasional flower might also look good. Moving back to the structure itself, we'll add a crooked nose made from spruce logs so it stands out from the logs around it, and dark oak stairs. Either side of that, we'll use spruce slabs to create a rough canopy for the porch. The house is meant to look run down and abandoned, so there's no need to follow this block for block, just try to recreate the effect. If you want your house to look a bit more cartoony, you could twirl the ends upwards like a moustache. We'll add eyebrows to the house using nether brick, curving it downwards towards the nose to give the face more of a frown, and then fill in the forehead up here and make a start on the roof, which will use stone brick, slabs, and stairs. You could mix in some cracked stone brick and cobble here if you like, and the roof doesn't need to look neat. In fact, once again, the messier the house is, the more organic and alive it will feel. While we're finishing the roof, I'll remind you that these tutorials and many of the other things I do on my channel would not be possible without the support I receive on Patreon. You can visit patreon.com slash to donate and support future videos. Once the roof is on, the inside of the house will be pretty dark, but adding redstone lamps just below the eyes will let the house glow from the inside even during the night, which will be a great effect for Halloween. We'll start the interior by making the entrance as disorienting as possible. Make a path going to the left, wrapping it entirely in black concrete so visitors will have a hard time seeing where they're going. 
Right after that, place down some magma blocks and lay carpet down over the top. Anyone who walks over this without crouching or using Frostwalker boots is going to take a couple of hearts of damage. Place steps around this leading down into the house and maybe give them a peek at what they just walked over. In the first room we'll add some slime dripping down from an upstairs floor. This can spread out into a puddle on the floor here and it could even be running down the outside of the building too. Add a torch under this if you want to give it a spooky glow. We'll swap out the grass in here for a mixture of oak and spruce planks just like the porch floor. Right by the stairs, we'll make an archway out of spruce wood leading into the next room, where we'll start to add a few pieces of furniture, a corner couch made of nether brick, with a trap door in the corner, which I'll explain in a minute. Maybe the slime room could be the kitchen with a brewing stand, a cauldron, and a furnace. Grab some red nether brick and nether wart block, because this room is going to have some gory detail, an enormous heart hanging from the ceiling. Make sure it has some clearance from the floor, and add red and blue glass panes, like veins and arteries. Dotting some redstone around the floor will make it look like the heart has spilled over a little. And when you're ready, hop down the trapdoor in the corner and dig out a space below the floor, where we're going to add my favourite detail, a note block mechanism for a heartbeat. You'll get a kick drum sound by placing note blocks on stone, and a simple redstone clock triggered by an observer you can move in and out of the circuit using a piston will create a super atmospheric heartbeat sound. You could add the lever to turn this on or off under the trapdoor, or turn it into a corner table with the lever hidden underneath, if that's better for your redstone circuit. Now that's done, we'll add a painting in the corner opposite the couches, and use slabs to create a staircase up to the next floor, level with the top of the heart. Underneath the staircase, we can create a door for a storage cupboard, add a torch inside for lighting, and fill the chests with bones, zombie flesh, spider eyes, whatever creepy items you have to hand. Adding a spruce wood pillar here for the stairs to wind around will help support the upper floor and make the staircase feel more narrow and claustrophobic. The ceiling of this section, which is also the floor for the room above, can be made of oak stairs, arranged randomly to make it look like parts of the ceiling are falling in. We can fill in this alcove over here with a creepy painting and a skeleton skull or a dead bush in a pot, and suits of armour will look good for decoration as visitors make their way up the stairs. Now we can start on the wall in the master bedroom, leaving a short corridor at the top of the stairs and a spruce door so you can't see what's behind it. We'll cover up the blocks from the heart with red carpet and place a double bed over here against the wall with some red wool blocks as a headboard. Framing that either side with fences, we'll continue the wall around here and build a ladder up this wall, but conceal it behind a secret entrance, a painting placed against an open door so the visitors will have to do some exploring before they find it. This could be another storage cupboard too, or maybe have some paintings up on the walls, but I'll leave that up to you. For now, we'll fill in the walls, concealing the lever that's activating this redstone lamp, and move back into the bedroom for the main detail, an angry ghost made of slime blocks. Start with a 3x3 in the back, then build a row in front, two arms either side, and then lay down some green stained glass with two wither skulls on top facing inwards for the eyes, then finish the top of his head with a T-shape like so. We'll also add some iron bars like their chains he's been rattling. With the ghost done, we'll start to add a ceiling to this room, sloping it inwards, and add a couple more decorative touches to this room, like a painting above the bed, and a cabinet on the opposite wall. Going back up the secret ladder, we can add a walkway around here, and throw in a cheap scare by mounting a creeper head on an armour stand for when visitors come up the ladder. We'll add stairs all the way around the top of this wall, then create an L-shaped room in the attic space. This one will have an iron door to keep visitors out, or maybe to keep the residents in. Adding bars to the gaps in the roof, we're going to turn this into a bright and colourful kids' room with a pink bed, a magenta carpet, a couple of toy boxes, and some wool blocks. Oh, and one more detail, a name-tagged baby zombie, or, ideally, a zombie villager. Just be careful how you handle him. If he's particularly vicious, once you've laid down a proper floor for the hallway outside, you can add some bloodstains with redstone dust. A few paintings will also add an appropriately creepy vibe, and now the room below has a ceiling, it can also have a chandelier. One final touch, if you're in creative mode or if you're a mob moving wizard in survival, throw a guardian or even an elder guardian in a water pool below the floorboards. Both of them will make ghostly noises when you're nearby, but the Elder Guardian will jump scare them and inflict mining fatigue so they can't break any blocks. Thanks for watching this one chunk tutorial, which was made possible with the support of my wonderful community of patrons. You can head to patreon.com slash to donate and get rewards, including membership to my patrons-only Minecraft server. 
A structure file for this build can be downloaded from the links in the description along with all the other builds in this series so far. Before you go, don't forget to leave a like on this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss future tutorials. My name has been Pixel Riffs, and I'll see you guys soon. Happy Halloween!